Welcome to episode 14 of Dow's Your Way to Psychic Power. In this episode, where science and the spirit meet. Have you lived before? And how to douse a past life? Dowsing for spirit possession comes under the general heading of spiritual dowsing which is interacting with other dimensions through the medium of our dowsing instruments. It can be seen as a kind of clairvoyance. And yet there's an element of science to it as well, because at last the world of science and the world of spirit are beginning to say the same thing. For instance, string theory claims there are ten space-time dimensions, while the many worlds interpretation proposes an infinite number of universes. But we say the ancients have always known there are other realities out there. The way I try to keep things simple is to think not so much of dimensions, but more frequencies. All matter vibrates at its own frequency. Even in our bodies, different parts of us vibrate at different rates. Think of musical notes. Everything has its own frequency, and the whole lot are orchestrated into a unique symphony which makes every human being as individual as their fingerprints. And we as human beings exist in an ocean of vibrations, and the ocean of vibrations that exist on this earth is itself whirling through an infinite universe of frequencies. And, as in our daily material lives, those other dimensions, or frequencies, contain both the good and the bad guys. The good guys are archangels, angels, ascended masters, spirit guides, light beings and divas. Among the bad guys are demons, dark forces, spirit attachments, poltergeists, curses, black magic and astral parasites. They all exist as energy, and this energy has an intelligence from rudimentary to genius level and beyond. These other entities who co-inhabit our realm interact with us in various ways, and most often they do so when our defences are down through drink or drugs or any addiction or through illness. Some people deliberately open their inner beings to give spirit entities access. As I've said before, playing with a Ouija board for instance. This is the equivalent to opening your front door and inviting any passerby in. In case you're tempted to think this is all fantasy, try googling Ed and Lorraine Warren. This American couple spent 40 years removing and exorcising bad spirits and poltergeists from thousands of families. Their life stories featured in a book entitled The Demonologist by Gerald Brittle. You might like to check out reviews on Amazon and see what I mean. So, how do we as dowsers interact with the world of spirit? With dowsing, we can detect negative intelligences, identify the type, remove them from people or the location, transmute negative energy into positive, retrieve lost souls, and release trapped spirits. What are the symptoms of spirit possession? Here are a few. Feeling drained, ongoing fatigue, acting out of character, memory loss, ice-cold body parts, sudden illness that eludes diagnosis, insistent voices in the head, addictions of all sorts, how do we diagnose a possible case of possession? First, draw up a comprehensive list or chart of potential spiritual infections, demon possession, curses, loss of soul fragments, astral entity, etc. And then ask your pendulum to tell you which on your list is the cause of the problem. 
What's the cure? Let's say it's an earthbound discarnate human. If you believe you have a spirit or spirits inhabiting your being, first get into that alpha state we talked about and then visualize any dark shadows either attached to your aura or lodged inside your body. Call in your own spirit guide or angel helper to assist you and use him or her as an intermediary. Ask your guide to relay everything you're saying and thinking. Let those shadows develop into a stronger shape and then mentally address the entity through your light being. Something along the lines of, I'm speaking to the dominant spirit among you. I know you're living inside my space, possibly along with other weaker entities. You should be aware that you do not belong here and are breaking universal law by hindering my spiritual development and not allowing my true self to have full expression. Then, telepathically continue your dialogue. You'll find the entity will reply and in most cases answer your questions. If you suspect that the entity is lying to you, ask the same question three times. The third answer will be truthful because spirits cannot lie more than three times. Don't be confrontational. Remember, the spirit's possession of you may have been something beyond their control and they need your help to get past this hurdle in their spiritual journey. Tell them they have a spirit guide who's standing by waiting to take them on the next stage of their soul's journey. Introduce them. Explain the advantages to them of continuing their journey. Suggest there is no logical reason for them choosing to remain stuck in your energy field. Visualize a powerful shaft of brilliant white light nearby, reaching from Earth as far as the eye can see towards the heavens. Invite the spirit to go to the light and take all those weaker entities with him. Imagine them all holding hands and walking to the shaft of light and disappearing into it. Because these podcasts deal with such a wide range of subject matter, it's not possible to go into greater detail on this topic, but you can find masses of helpful material on the internet. Meanwhile, let's look at a close cousin of spirit release and possession, past life therapy. This and spirit possession are such huge subjects that they deserve a podcast series all to themselves, and there are already scores of books on both, but few utilise dowsing as an essential tool. How to Douse a Past Life? An account by dowser Juanita Ott on her website mirrorwaters.com is worth quoting in full as it uses dowsing and is the clearest exposition of this skill I've seen and is a wonderful example if you fancy trying it yourself. Nita says that several years ago she doused a past life for her son Jeremy. This was the very first past life dowsing either of them had done but not the last. Nita offers it as an example you might follow when performing your own past life dowsing. I should point out that she utilises charts, historical documents and the internet. Let's listen in, as it were, to her session with Jeremy. Nita, preparing to douse. Do I have permission to douse for Jeremy's past life incarnations? Dow's answer, yes. Nita asks her dowsing tool, Do I have the ability to douse for Jeremy's past life incarnations? Dow's answer, yes. Nita, can I connect now to Jeremy's most recent incarnation prior to this life? Yes. Nita swings her pendulum into search mode. Please research this life now. Was Jeremy a male in this previous life? Yes. Was Jeremy a female in this life? No. 
When was Jeremy born in this life? Answer, using a chart. July 27, 1846. Nita. When did Jeremy die in this life? Answer, again, using a chart. 1923. Where did this incarnation occur? Dow's answer, Asia. Nita gets an atlas and then refines her search with historical maps downloaded from the internet, dowsing each name asking for a closest location to the area of Jeremy's last incarnation. Dowsed answer, Tibet. What was Jeremy's profession in that life? Soldier. What was Jeremy's social background? Using a chart, rich. How did Jeremy die in this incarnation? Old age. Did Jeremy have a wife? Yes. How many? Four. Did Jeremy have any children? Yes. Twenty-two. Twelve of them girls. What was Jeremy's name in this life? Nita, using an ABC chart. Fiorg. Last name, Quark. What was Jeremy's basic life energy in this incarnation? Gentleness, mercy, acceptance. What discordant energies did Jeremy experience? Cowardice, doubt. At this point, Jeremy agrees that Nita should check if people in Jeremy's life now were with him in his previous incarnation and starting with herself. No, I was not there. Jeremy then asks his mother to douse if other people in his current life were with him. What about Tom? Doused answer, no. Adam? No. Tara? Yes. Tara was one of his wives. Graham? Yes. One of your kids. What about Dad? No. Jeremy says, what the heck? What about Q? Doused answer, yes. Was Q one of Jeremy's wives? Yes. Nita douses that Tara was Jeremy's favourite wife. Jeremy asks, what about Laura? No. Joey? No. Cheryl's brother Joey? No. Gar? Yes, he was a friend. Nita broadens the scope of her questions. Was Jeremy part of any one significant event in history? Doused answer, no. At this point, Nita brings the session to a close. Needless to say, Jeremy was quite freaked out by the reading, but immediately wanted to try again. Incidentally, Nita's doused answers were later confirmed as accurate by another master dowser who douses past lives for a living. If you want to douse for your own or someone else's past lives, you need to prepare your questions carefully depending on what details you want to uncover. For instance, you might first ask your client, what themes are you interested in, spiritual, physical, emotional? Do you want to uncover a past trauma that might be affecting your current life? Are you obsessed by one topic and want to know why? Do you have a recurring dream that might have its roots in a past life? There are obviously some basics that apply to all past life dowsing. The time frame in the past, the geographical location, your environment, town, country, rich, poor, whether you were male or female, what your role was in that life, what strong relationships you had, when, where, how you died and so on. On her website, Nita has a set of dowsing charts as well as a lot of other useful stuff. That's mirrorwaters.com. Well, that just about brings us to the end of our journey to psychic power. By now, you'll have enough information to decide if you want to be a serious, even professional dowser, or a serious or even professional psychic, or both. I hope you've enjoyed these podcasts. If you're a glutton for punishment, as they say, I'm offering a final bonus episode which dives deeper into the Alice in Wonderland world of quantum science. It's not necessary to listen to, to enhance your psychic powers, 
but you might just be blown away by the mind-boggling implications of a science that baffles scientists and proves to us that this world is truly an amazing place. If you've liked what you've heard, be kind and give it a subscribe, write a review and spread the word on social media so we can create a community of kindred spirits. And don't forget, all this and more is in all the books in my Psychic Mind series. You can check them all out on Amazon or any online retailer. Just put my name, Anthony Talmage, in the books search field. So, in next week's bonus episode, we examine the exciting possibility that we, humble humans, are actually helping to create the world we live in by using our minds to work in partnership with the cosmic consciousness. And we look at what provides the proof of this conjecture, all in The Quantum Connection. See you then. <laughs>